this morning I'm going, uh, the title of my sermon is Now is the Time. And um, I just sense that God has placed this on my heart. And I just pray that even as I share this with you this morning, that as a church and as individual that we will rise up because I believe that now is the time. Let's just pray before we start. Thank you. Holy Spirit, we just invite you into this place. We know that you are already amongst us. Father, I just pray right now, Holy Spirit, that you will come and you will just fall afresh upon your people and fall afresh upon us, that we will have a fresh revelation of who you are even once again, because each day with you is is sweeter than the day before. And I just pray, Lord, that even as we, we listen to the word right now for each of us, Lord, that we will just have that receptivity of heart that this will be a heart to heart, from your heart to our heart, Father. And I just pray, Lord, uh, we know, Lord, that right now we are poised as a church for something powerful that you are wanting to do amongst us. So Holy Spirit, I pray that we will just be receptive to what you are saying, and I just pray that I will just step aside and allow you to just speak through me in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. So this... Today, you know, we, we've all, we're seeing change all around us. Can you see change all around you, yeah? You know, soon with our, our queen passing away, we've got to change the anthem. We have a king, uh, King Charles III, that will be our, our king now. It, things are changing all around us. It seems like the world is, is volatile. There's change all around us. We have a new prime minister uh, just... Uh, in place this week. We, over the last two to three years, there, there's change happening all around us each and every day. I don't know about you, but even with work and with everything that's going on, there's change all around us. But I get excited because I serve a God that is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. You see, our God is the constant. Amongst all the things that are going on around us, amongst all the variables and things that are going on around us, we serve a God that is unchanging. And I want to start off with that today because whatever you are going through in your life, we can lean on a God that is unchanging that is a constant. And this morning, how is it as a church that we now rise up? How is it as a church that we now react to all of this change? 2 Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their lands. Now, I know this is in the context of the time of Solomon and God is wanting to bless and restore the nation, but I sense the scripture is so poised for us right now because God is calling us to be a people that pray like never before. Be a people that seek him like never before. Be a people that humble ourselves and be a people that turn from our wicked ways. And you might be thinking, you know what, I'm not wicked. But our wicked ways could be anything that forms idols in our lives that are moving us away from God. Idols can form in our lives. Now, you would read in the book that my dad was a Hindu, and, and when we were little, we used to go to all our family and friends' houses, and lots of them were still Hindus, and you find these graven images of idols, and, and, and you know, for us, idols will relate to that, but in the day now, idols could be anything that is stopping you from serving your God to the fullest, It could be your spouse, it could be your child, it could be your hobby, it could be your career, it could be things that are going on in your life that are taking over, becoming an idol in your life that is stopping you from loving the Lord with all your heart. And I want you to think of that, and you might be thinking that's not for me, but I believe that could be for any of us sitting here this morning. And you see, this is an opportunity. People are now looking post-pandemic, post what we've gone through in, in these seasons, people are looking for a form of stability. 
They are looking for something to be constant because of an ever-changing world. They are looking for something that they can belong to. And this is where we step in as a church. Like never before are we poised to reach out to those that are wanting to know Jesus. Believe me, it's not about people do not know Jesus. It's, not, it's about us not going out and sharing about Jesus, the good news. Um, you know, this, this morning, I really sense that God is wanting us to, 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 to rekindle in us, that he has given us a hope. He has given us a new beginning. And we cannot, as I said last week, we cannot, we cannot keep that for ourselves. We have now a window of opportunity. Now, my husband loves football, and I kind of know a little bit about football. But there's a time when there's a transfer window. Does anyone know about this transfer window? Yes, you do. Put your hands up. Yes, you all know about, even if you don't know about football, you'll know about this time of a transfer window. And suddenly, my husband's all tense. The transfer window is happening. Who's going to go where? He knows all the facts and the figures and the the amounts, which we don't get into, but you know, he knows everything about this opportunity of a transfer window. And even as we look at that concept, I believe that this is the time of opportunity. It's a window of opportunity for us as a church globally to reach out to people because I can tell you what, People are looking for something constant in their lives. They're looking for a, something that they can rely on and something they can belong to, and that is the church. But unfortunately, although we have this opportunity around us, there are certain schemes of the enemy that is wanting to hold us back. Rather than rise up at the ch as a church, it's like the enemy is wanting us to go into a state of slumber and rest. And this morning, I, I feel so strongly about this message, you know, that, God, that the enemy is wanting to bring about schemes and ploys to move us away because God has great plans for us. Amen? Do you believe that? Are you there? God has great plans for you and I. He's got great plans for us as a church. But there's certain ploys, there are certain schemes, and I'm going to talk about three of them today. And the first one is sowing disunity. Now, the scripture, Ephesians 6 verse 12 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Now, I grew up, and, and you read in my book about, uh, you know, my dad was a pastor, and we grew up in a Christian home and, and all of that. But, you know, my parents really, really fought for unity in our family, and my dad would fight for unity amongst the pastors. He would, he, would, he would pray so earnestly for unity, and it would break my heart as a child to see people come in disunity. You see, this is such a big ploy of the enemy to sow disunity amongst his people. Because you see, unity is a weapon against the enemy. Unity can fight off a lot of things. If you are united as a, a marriage, if you are united as a family, if you are united as a small group, a connect group, if you are united as a church, it actually forms a weapon against the enemy. And I have seen how strong unity can be in bringing people together. You see, disunity distracts us from our destiny in Christ. It's a big statement. Disunity will actually distract us from our destiny as a church. Because what disunity will do is it will destroy. So rather than fighting against each other, we need to start, start fighting for each other. Amen? We need to start fighting for each other. You see, this morning, so often, 
we kind of like, you know, as husband and wife, actually, Devesh and I had a, a row last night, an, unno- an unnoticed row, quiet row. Uh, but, but God, you know, but the enemy does that, doesn't he? He brings about disunity to actually distract us from what God wants us to do. And I don't know about you, but it's distracting us as a church from what our destiny is. The next thing is steal, kill, and destroy. And John 10, 10 says, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come so that they may have life and have it to the full. Jesus is saying to us that the thief comes only. Have you ever met a thief coming for anything else? No. When we were in South Africa, now South Africa is the most beautiful place, but unfortunately the crime is, can be quite high. And um, when I was in my 20s, I was in university, but I, stay, I was staying at home. By the way, I said this before, but uh, we were just having a conversation just now about the children in England, how they love to go away from their parents. Hint, hint, Rachel, going to university soon. But we're in, in, in South Africa and in the Indian culture, we hold on to our kids for dear life. Like, please don't leave us. So when I was 20, my, and we had a university, local university, we studied at the local university. And uh, so anyway, I was in my 20s, and uh, it was in the night, at 2 o'clock in the night, and I had my little yellow mini golf. Was it a golf device? Yeah, that I bought, uh, it, you know, and I loved that car. It was a yellow, canary yellow golf, and it was parked outside. And I had in the car, which I should have taken out, my radio and cassette player. And you must be thinking, how, how old is this person? <laughs> you even know what a cassette player is? Yes, we even had cassette players. We used to put a cassette in and listen to music. And there was this cassette player, and we usually would take it out. And it was two o'clock in the morning, and I, I was a, I'm a very light sleeper, and I heard something outside, and there was, I saw this man in this black coat going to grab my cassette player, and I couldn't speak. I was like, <coughs> and I started, you know, banging on the window, but he had just pulled that cassette player, and he was gone. But his intention was only to steal. (laughs) He didn't come there to walk around our yard and have a look at the cars or whatever was going on there. But the intention was purely to steal. And I'm going to tell you what, that is purely the intention of the enemy to steal your peace, to kill your joy, and to destroy our hope. That is the intention of the enemy. And there's a parable in Matthew 13, and I want you to really focus on this. And I I put it it there as a picture for you to look at. It's a bit animated picture, but the parable that Jesus talks about of the farmer that goes out to sow some seeds. As the farmer goes out to sow some seeds, some seeds fall along the wayside. They fall along the path. Some seeds fall along rocky ground, and the plant, it's, it's shallow ground, so the plant does grow, but when the sun comes, it just withers and it dies. Some fall upon thorns, and the plant does grow, but, but it chokes the plant, and it dies. And some forms upon good ground where there is fruitfulness. And in the end of chapter 13 of Matthew, Jesus goes on to explain this parable. When it is good soil, when you hear the word of God and when you're hearing seeds that have been sown into your life, you become fruitful. But when that seed is falling upon the path and there's no understanding and the birds of the air just come and snatch away those seeds, then it is lost. Seeds die. They're dead. And then it's the rocky, where you receive the word with such joy and and excitement, but things that happen, challenges quickly kills that seed. And then there's that with the thorns, where seeds have been sown, but the cares and the worries of life come, and they actually kill that seed. And as I was thinking about this parable and meditating upon it, you see, many of us receive the seed very well. 
You receive the seed on a Sunday morning, you come in, you're feeling refreshed. You, you, you skip out of here. There's a, there's a skip in your step as you, you're feeling refreshed, you're feeling renewed. But as you step out, come Monday, that seed, it's like, it's like the bird is circling and he's just snatching the seed. And I don't know whether that's, that's true for any one of you here that is sitting But I know for myself that so often we can come and we can receive, but the enemy is wanting to steal. And today, last week I spoke about uh, (coughs) the verses, loving the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength, and loving your neighbor as yourself. You see, Seeds are being sown, but what we do with the seed is so important. When we go away, loving the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength, but also equally important, and I believe for us, is loving each other. You know, we start connect groups this week. You know, when we get into our connect groups, we talk about the word. So that seed is not allowed to fall along the path because you're getting greater understanding of the word. You see, we sharpen each other, don't we? We sharpen each other. We don't allow the seeds that God has sown in our lives, the promises that he has given us. We don't allow that to die because we have each other. Amen? Yeah? That is what's going to sharpen us. That is what is not going to allow those seeds to die in our lives. So I pray that even as we start engaging this week in small groups, which is our connect groups, that you start believing that that connect group is not just a group, but it is where you can seal the seed that is being sown into your life. The other thing and the third thing is we hold on to to our past. Philippians 3.13 says, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of this, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, I strain towards what is ahead. You see, as human beings, we, we can't forget. Sometimes we can't forget things that have gone on behind us and in the past. And that's so true. I'm the same. You know, we remember. You, you know, I'll tell Devation, you know, 20 years you said that. That's probably a bad example because you probably remember what happened 20 years ago. But, you know, we remember things, don't we? We find it hard to forget. And I'm not talking about just forgetting. But what I am talking about is don't stay in your past. Don't live in your past. You see, it's so easy to live in the past. It's so easy to stay there, to use all your energy there, to put all your heart in the past. And God is saying we need to strain. You know, uh, Paul is using the word straining towards what is ahead. He's not saying it's easy, but he's saying we need to strain towards what is ahead because church, God has an awesome plan for us as a church. I hope you believe that because you are very, very quiet today. I pray that you believe that, that God has an awesome plan for us as a church. He's wanting to move us forward. He's wanting us to move a step forward, not even a step, but even a leap forward into what he has for our life. And this morning, God is looking for us to move forward. Now, just this week on Thursday, we had... Um, a talk from uh, an Indian consultant. He's an orthopedic consultant, but he now lives in the UK. And he's leading the world in, in uh, innovations with hip replacements. Now, I work as a physiotherapist at North Tees and Hartlepool Hospital. I've been there a long time. And uh, we have worked with a lot of hip uh, and knee replacement patients. And, uh, you know, over the years, things have definitely evolved with hip replacements and knee replacements. But this consultant started to talk about a day procedure for hip replacements, which means he brings his patients in 
after two hours of an operation, they stand up and they start walking. After four hours, they are discharged. And I was like, we were all blown away by all of this, like, wow, how can this happen? You see, when we get patients, now, the patients hate physiotherapists. You know that, isn't it? They hate us because when they've had a hip replacement, knee replacement, back operation, shoulder operation, we go to them and we're going to move their shoulders. We're going to move their knees. So they hate us. So they don't call us physiotherapists. They call us physioterrorists, okay? Because they kind of like hate us, right? But we go and we start moving them. But he was talking about how different the mindset of these patients are. He chooses only a few patients that are obviously going to be very motivated and are, um, are that type of patient. You see, when patients come generally out to have a hip replacement or when we refer them on for a hip or knee replacement, they would have been in pain for months and years before. They would have pain actually imprinted in their minds. They've got this pain in the hip and the knee. So they would have had pain for, for many, many years. And what it is, is that when they have this hip replacement, a day procedure, research is now showing that because they're getting moving so fast, their pain is actually less. That's phenomenal. Because they're moving faster and they're moving quicker, they're not thinking about their pain so much that they're actually recovering quicker. And I started to think of that in the spiritual. You see, when we come to Jesus, we have new hope in him, amen? When we come to him, we have a new beginning. But so often we sit in the pain of the past and not enjoy what God has done is doing for us in the now. And so often we can start to think of the pain and the pain and, the, and we can sit there and wallow in that. And God is saying, I need you to move forward, church, because I have a special, special plan for you. I'm just going to ask my uh, people to come to the front that are going to do a little. So where do we go from there? Hebrews 12 verses 1 to 2 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness, let us throw off everything that hinders the sin that so easily entangles us, and let us run with perseverance the race that is marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross scorning his shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You see, J.E., my very capable uh, person out there, he has a backpack, yeah? So you just think, we received Christ into your life, and this could be so relevant to us when we are young, when we are children as well. You receive, you receive Christ into your life, and everything's well, isn't it, J.E.? And J.E. is going to walk across. Come on, J.E., cues. And J.E. is going to walk across. And he's upright and everything is going well. And he's just enjoying life and life to the full. And then what happens? Sometimes sin can come into our lives. Sometimes things can come to our lives. And this is kind of like in a teenage states, you know, when things are starting to wear us down. And when J.E. walks now, it seems like a bit more. Yes, look at him. Wow. Give him a clap. Come on. Oh, look at that. Yeah. You know, he's got a sweat on. You know, things are, things are not easy because he's got sin on him. And then even worse now, bitterness and hatred and unforgiveness and, and all of these things are, are entering into our lives. And we become and Jay is going to go, and, and now life is like a big burden on our shoulders. <laughs> and he needs a knee replacement too. You know, and, you know, it's like life is a burden. Go, Jay, keep walking. <laughs> life is a burden, and life is a struggle, and you can't get through life. And that's because there's so much that we have. Give him a clap. Oh, well done, Jay. 
But Jay is overcome. He clearly is walking a lot straighter now. Praise the Lord. But what I was trying to say is that life can be like that. You know, when Jay walked with that load on his shoulder, so often some of you that are here, you might feel like that, that there's this heavy burden on your shoulder. You might be feeling like seeds are being sown into your life, but you can't overcome that hurt, that bitterness, that unforgiveness. And, and last week, I, I, I spoke of the scripture, ele, uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight, and it says, come to me, come to me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And the Lord is saying to those of you that might relate to that, that you know what? You need to give it to the Lord. You need to give it to him because life is going to be so hard. And, and some of you might be sitting here with unforgiveness in your heart and you cannot move forward. You know the Bible talks, you know, or unforgiveness is like poison, it's like you're drinking poison, and we heard Pastor Jonathan preach on that as well. It's like you're drinking poison. The person that you can't forgive is having a good night's sleep and enjoying life, and you are sitting there in a pit of despair with unforgiveness in your heart. And why do I talk of all of these? Why am I bringing all of these up? Because God has a purpose and a plan for us in our lives. He's wanting us to move forward. There's a window of opportunity. He wants us to be aware that unity is going to connect us. Unity is going to move us forward. He doesn't want us, those seeds, to be stolen from our lives. He wants them to be good soil seeds, yeah? He wants us to enter into a time of fruitfulness and he's wanting us not to hold on to the past because if we hold on to the past we can't strain forward into what he has planned for us and this morning God has great plans for us 2 Corinthians uh, 3 5 verse 17 to 21 says therefore if anyone is in Christ the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. Amen. Do you believe that? I hope you're believing that. I can hear a slight amen. We're getting there. By all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. When we enter into the new, God gives us the ministry of reconciliation that God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting people's sin against them. And he has committed us the message of reconciliation. He has given us that hope. He has given us salvation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though Christ were making his appeals through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, re be reconciled to God, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God. This morning, God is calling each one of us into a ministry of reconciliation. He is wanting us to be those ambassadors for him, those co-workers for him that will go out and reach the world with what we have, amen, with the hope that we have. And God is calling us to be community changers. You know, when we arrived in uh, Destiny Church 18 years ago, I was so excited because of the way our church is situated. It is like a lighthouse in Norton. I don't know whether you agree with me, but I felt that, and I still feel that. This could become a haven for souls, amen? If we would just step out in faith. Church, you know, I believe so strongly in this window of opportunity that God is calling us because Luke 10, 2 says, he told them, and Jesus is saying this to us as well, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. 
Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. You see, there's a time for sowing and there's a time for reaping. Now, when we were in South Africa, my sister Val, she's amazing. I mean, I'm amazed at her because she loves the garden. She loves farming. She loves doing things outside, which is totally different to me. And she loves what she's planted in her garden is garlic. And the version took photos of this beautiful garlic. But she knew when to sow the seed and she knew when to reap the harvest. And I believe, church, that this is the time for us to reap the harvest. Now, very excitingly, we have an alpha course that is coming to destiny. Are you excited? Yes. The Alpha Course starts on the 2nd of October. What is the Alpha Course? The Alpha Course is a, a course about the Christian faith. And even for those of you that have been saved for uh, hundreds of years, <laughs> you will still love the Alpha Course. And the, the Alpha Course has been revamped, re-envisioned. Uh, it's a course that is pioneered and um, birthed by Nikki Gumbel, um, and in Holy Trinity Church down in London. And the Alpha Course has seen thousands of people worldwide come to Jesus. And we have the awesome opportunity of running an Alpha Course on the 2nd of October starting. And I would encourage every one of you to come to this Alpha Course. But just don't come alone, bring a friend along. Bring somebody in your family along. It, it's a beautiful setting because we get to eat first, yes, and then we get to watch a video, and then we just get to talk to each other, and also we have a youth alpha, so you start inviting your friends to come along as well. We want us all to be involved in this alpha. We've run, between Kath and I, we've run like nearly 26 alphas since being in England, but this alpha, I believe, is a window of opportunity, for us as a church, because there is a power of inviting. Can I just tell you, you know, if I share quickly, Adam, that's sitting at the back there, you probably will all know Adam, but when he went to work, people were talking about church, because when he went to the, his workplace, at that time, many of the people at, church, at his workplace belonged to our church, and I don't know how many attempts it took, you, uh, took them, Adam, uh, seven attempts it took them to invite Adam to an alpha course. And now he's part of our church for I don't know how many years. Seven years, seven, seven, perfection, yeah. The power of the invite. Can I start encouraging you? Please start inviting, I implore you, to start inviting your neighbors, your friends, your family, your husbands, your wives, your children to the Alpha Course on the 2nd of October. You know, as I was talking to Edith this week, I was so encouraged because she said 76 years ago, Edith's 90 this year, when she was 14 years old, somebody invited her and four of her friends to go to church. She was not a Christian. She went to church. She gave her heart to Christ. And 76 years later, she is serving God. That is the power of the invite. So I encourage you. I challenge you. Start inviting. Let's invite because we have a window of opportunity and God is calling us to be ambassadors for him. He's calling us to be ministers of reconciliation. I am so excited. I am a co-worker of the almighty God. I am excited that I serve a faithful God that is unchanging. He is my constant in my life. And this morning, if you do not know this Jesus, if you do not know the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, we are going to have this opportunity to pray for you right now. And I'm just going to start off praying for anybody that's, that is here that does not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. You know, it is the greatest decision you will ever make in your life. 
Because he is the one that changes our life all around. He is the one that gives us meaning. You know, the alpha cost, the slogan is, is there, is there more life to this? Is there, what is the meaning of life? And that is what Jesus brings to our lives. He brings meaning. And this morning, if you are here and you do not know Jesus, I would love for you to just echo this prayer. I would love for you to just say, dear Lord Jesus, I accept you into my life. I ask, Lord, that you come and be the savior of my life. I believe that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I believe that you are the Son of God. And I confess my sin before you and I ask that you come into my life and be the savior of my life, the captain of my life, in Jesus' name. And I just want all of us to stand right now. And even as I've prayed, uh, talked through things that may go, be going on in your world of, um, of heartache, of bitterness, of unforgiveness, you see the enemy's ploy is for you to sit in that. It is, it is. And whether you like it or not, and sometimes some of you are sensing that right now, and and, you, and you're fighting it. But the Lord is saying, I've got, a good, I've got a great purpose for your life. I've got powerful things in store for you. But you feel like that hamster in the wheel. You feel like you're going through the same thing over and over and over again. And it's not about the seed, but it's about what we are doing with the seed. And this morning, can I just encourage you? to speak to somebody, to speak to somebody, to get involved in your connect group, to, to just come around somebody who will pray with you, who will work with you to, to resolve these problems. But it is the power of the Holy Spirit that can bring change. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that can bring a turn turn around in your life. And this morning, I'm going to pray for you. Lord, I just pray for those that are struggling right now in whatever circumstance, Lord. I just sense some of your people are, are, are like carrying this baggage on their backs, Lord, and it's like too much for them, Lord. But you say in your word that we need to come to you. You say in your word we need to give it to you. And Lord, by faith today, Lord, I pray for anybody that's feeling feeling that right now, that they would give it to you. In, in the spiritual right now, they will pass it over to you, that you will take that burden and you will remove it from their shoulders. Some of you here are believing for breakthrough in your marriages, breakthrough in circumstances, breakthrough in situations. And Lord, today I pray for each person and every person that is looking for a breakthrough, that you will bring a breakthrough in their lives in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And even as we prayed last week, I pray, let's pray for those in our world that are yet to know Jesus. Because this is, church, our window of opportunity. This is where we get to reach out to them with your testimony, with your love, with, your, with what you have in you. And I pray that even through this week that there will be opportunity created to share the goodness of God. To share how good he is. Lord, I pray for us as a church, even as we lift our hands to you in surrender today, Lord, we surrender those in our world that are yet to know you, Lord. We ask, Lord, <coughs> that through this week, Lord, that we will find opportunities to bring life, to speak life through you in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. We seal that, Lord. We seal that as a church, that we will seize this opportunity to reach out to our friends, to reach out to our spouse, to reach out to our family, to reach out to our colleagues, to reach out, Lord, to those that are yet to know you. And even this week, Lord, as we go back to connect groups, I pray, Lord, seeds that have been sown will now be uh, sown even deeper into our hearts, even as we talk about Alpha, even as we talk about inviting, even as we talk about how we're going to grow closer to you, that things will be sealed in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you.